For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Join Reverend Cynthia Forbes for the message of hope. Jesus says to go into all the world and preach the gospel, the good news. The good news of salvation. Why would I choose to spend eternity in hell with the devil who is wreaking havoc in this world? To those who have given their, their time and their life over to him, I don't want to spend my time, my eternity with him. No way. And you should not want to do the same because it is forever and ever unending. Tune in for words of encouragement and hope in a life of Christ. Message of hope right here on the Tobago Inspirational Network every Wednesday, 5.30 p.m. Greetings in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Let me take this opportunity to welcome one and all to the message of hope. I trust that all is well with everyone out there. This is the season of Christmas, preparing for Christmas, but I want to encourage everyone, yeah, even as we prepare for Christmas, the celebration of Christmas, celebrating the birth of the Lord Jesus Christ, do not leave him out of your life. Prepare, prepare to meet your God, as the scripture says. Prepare for the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. This is a season of celebration. Celebrate the birth of the Lord Jesus Christ, but celebrate his birth also in your life that makes you born again. We want to read from the epistle to the Thessalonians. That is the second epistle. The epistle of, this is of Paul to the Thessalonians, chapter one. In this epistle, he, he has been encouraging the brethren, those who had been, been persecuted and been troubled by unbelievers, those who, in the Bible, Jesus said that we're going to suffer persecution uh, because we, we named the name of Christ. And in this world, we're going to have tribulation. But he said, be of good courage. He overcame, and because he overcame, we will also overcome. So, and this, this encouragement is not only for what's for the Thessalonians then, it is for us today, there are implications for us. Mm -hmm. So there are just 12 short verses, and I, want, I would like to read those verses for us so that we have a kind of background as to what is going on. But let me just pray and ask God to guide our minds, guide our spirit, to help me to do what we would have me to do. So Father God, I give you praise, and I give you thanks for your goodness, your mercy, your love, your grace, your kindness, and your faithfulness. As I stand to declare your word, Use me as your mouthpiece. I surrender my life. I surrender my mind, my, my entire being to you right now in the name of Jesus Christ. By the Holy Spirit, take full control now, O oh God. Let me say what you have me to say in Jesus' almighty name. Amen. Um, Paul and Silvanus and Timotheus unto the church of the Thessalonians in God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, grace unto you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Even as I said peace, I remember the, when, at the birth of Jesus Christ, um, peace and goodwill was, was meted out to all men. Yes, peace and goodwill. Real peace comes from the knowledge, comes from knowing God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. We know the heading here is we know you are suffering. We are bound, that's Paul and his, his, his co-workers. We are bound to thank God always for you, brethren, as it is meet because of your faith, because that your faith groweth exceedingly and the charity of every one of you all toward each other abounded, so that we ourselves glory in you in the churches of God for your patience and faith in all your persecutions and tribulations that you endure, which is a manifest token of the righteous judgment of God, that ye may be counted worthy of the kingdom of God for which ye also suffer. Seeing it is a righteous thing with God to recompense tribulation to them that trouble you. Seeing, verse 6, seeing it is a righteous thing with God to recompense tribulation to them 
that trouble you. Are you being troubled? Are you being persecuted? Are you being tormented in any way by, by neighbors or by co-workers because you stand for Christ, because you stand for righteousness, because you stand for holiness, because you do not do the things that others do, because you are a child of God? Verse 6 says, it is a righteous thing with God <laughs> to recompense or to repay or meet, let meet out to them tribulation for those that trouble you. And to you who are troubled, rest with us when the Lord Jesus shall be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels, in flaming fire, taking vengeance on them that know not God and that obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ who will be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his power. From the glory of his power, when he shall come to be glorified in his saints and to be admired in all them that believe, because our testimony among you was believed in that day. Wherefore, also we pray always for you, that our God would count you worthy of this calling, and fulfill all the good pleasure of his goodness and the work of faith with power, that the name of our Lord Jesus Christ may be glorified in you and you in him according to the grace of our God and the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, um, the verses I want to zero in on are verses... Um, uh, let's see, seven, eight, and nine, seven, but more so, more so, eight and nine, eight and nine. But for connection, we go back to seven. So let me read seven, eight, and nine again. And to you who are troubled, rest with us. When the Lord shall be revealed, the Lord Jesus Christ, he shall be revealed from heaven where he went after he was risen from the dead. He went back to heaven. So he will be coming from that same place, heaven, with his mighty angels in flaming fire, taking vengeance on them that know not God and that obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, who shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his power. My topic, the topic tonight is avoiding, avoiding eternal punishment. We can. If we choose, we can avoid eternal punishment. Every one of us, every one of us, the choice is ours. And you know, when I think about it, see, just imagine God set out his plan, his plan of salvation, his plan of deliverance. He made, he made the way possible. He went out of his way, let me say, so to speak, to make it possible that mankind could live with him forever. Yet we choose, many people, we choose not to go his way. You know, the scripture, you know, as I said, all we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone in out our own ways. You know, that, that turning away from God started in the Garden of Eden. Doing what, doing what God said not to do. That's, that's how we are. Basically, basic human nature. And I, I was thinking today, I said, you know, sometimes I notice it's put up. Wet paint, wet paint, it's wet. But you know what we do? We touch it. We touch it to see if it's wet. Yeah? We touch it to see if it's wet. Do not touch or do not walk there. Do not, the do not stuff. We do the opposite. So, so here we can avoid eternal punishment, eternal damnation, eternal separation from the presence of God. The Bible tells us in the presence of the Lord, there is fullness of joy and at his right hand are pleasures forevermore. In his presence, where God is, there is, there is, there is joy, there is peace. Come on. So I want to let us know that there are two things, according to what we read here, there are two main things to do 
to reverse in reverse two things is to do the reverse of what is written here get to know god and obey the gospel of jesus christ get to know god and obey the gospel come on the gospel is being preached day after day year after year month after year that which we should believe believe the gospel of what believe the record gospel means good news believe the good news about the lord jesus christ believe the good news about the lord jesus christ amen i'm not going to there not going there yet um i'm looking at no god who is this god that people must choose to know who is this god who is god there are people who believe there is there's no god there are also those who believe that even if there's a god you can't know him but god can be known he wants us to know him 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 and to love him and to serve him and to be with him forever and ever this god he who is he he is self existing the self existing one this god that is to be known that should be known that people don't want to know they don't care to know is the first person of the godhead or the trinity the bible tells us that he's the i am that i am he's the one who spoke the world into being he is called the ancient of days he is the counselor comforter guide healer deliverer he is the holy one of israel we can find so many things in the word of god that tells us who this god is he is the god of hope <laughs> he is the god of peace you want peace he is the god of peace he is just peace he is peace he is the god of peace He's the God of our salvation. He provided that for us through Jesus Christ. He's Alpha and Omega. He's the first and the last, the beginning and the ending, and all that is in between. He is omnipotent. This God is omniscient. He knows all things. Omnipotent. He's all powerful. He's omnipresent. He's present everywhere. He's the mighty, mighty God. He is the lover and the keeper of our souls. This God is the same yesterday, today and forever. What he did then he can do now and he will do the same tomorrow next year. He's the altogether lovely one. He's the king of kings, he's the lord of lords and so much more. Now, when we talk about knowing God, to know God, that listen, He's coming to take, to take. I mean, vengeance is a very harsh, very harsh word. <laughs> vengeance is a very harsh word. It means to to inflict inflict punishment in return for a wrong that was committed. Vengeance is a hard hard word. And God is saying He's going to come to take vengeance on all who don't know Him, who refuse to know Him, and the knowing Him is not head knowledge. A lot of people know there is a God. A lot acknowledge, some acknowledge there is a God, but that's not the knowledge. That's not the knowledge He wants. Not just head knowledge, yeah, but um, an experience, experiencing God. Experience that is an experience. To know this God, have an experience, have an encounter with Him through Jesus Christ. It's like what the Apostle Paul had on his way to, and most all of us we had that encounter. But I'm going to use that as a striking example on his way. Many of us didn't fall off any horse to have this encounter with the Lord Jesus Christ. Many of us we were some were in a crusade. I, I was at a crusade. Some were in their own homes. Some were in a party and God spoke to them there. Some were in carnival and God spoke to them there. Some were in all kinds of places in the bar and God spoke to them there. Yes. 
So, so it's not, not, not a, just a head knowledge. He wants us to have an experience with him, make him our God, our personal God, our personal Father, that we can go to him whenever we want. We can go to him, we can trust him, we can rely on him. Yes? So, so why do we need to know this God? Why do we need to know God? And, and not only that, let me just piggyback a little bit. Romans 12 and 19 in Roman, Romans 12 and 19 is recorded there where it is said, vengeance is mine, said the Lord, I will repay. Vengeance is mine. Paul was telling the Romans, um, don't take vengeance. You don't do, don't do people anything. When they hurt you, don't hurt them back. When they persecute you, you don't persecute them back. Leave that for God. Some people will get the, the vengeance here on earth and after as well. <laughs> if they don't change, if they don't repent, they will experience problems. The perse being persecuted, they will experience the vengeance here on earth, right here. And, and it will also follow them if they do not repent. So, so why, why, do we need to, why, why do we need to know this God? Is it important? Is, is it necessary? Why should we? Why, why, why God wants us to know him? <laughs> why, why does he want us to know him? And if we don't know him, you see, he will do that because he's, he's showing utter disrespect and disregard for the creator, for the one who um, brought, caused us to be alive and brought us into being. Yes, he, he, it is like, it's, it, it's just an embarrassment. It's like, spitting in his face, <laughs> you know, a slap, a slap in his face to reject him, to turn, to turn our back on him uh, for all his goodness uh, causing us to be born and, and, and seeing us through many difficulties and trials and, and, and we still turn our back on him. It, it's, it's a hurtful thing. It is hurting his heart when you look at his creation. He looks at us and how we, we, we despise him, how we don't care about him, how we turn our back on him. After he would have done so much, we still reject him, we still rejecting him. We, we hear the message, the good news of salvation. We hear that we must turn to God and we still put, as people say, break stick in our ears. We put, we put cotton, we cork our ears. We don't want to hear anything about this God. The same God in whose Hand uh, is, is the breath of our nostrils, yeah? Who can at a flick, flick of his fingers, boom, wipe out this entire universe. Yeah, but he will not do that. He's giving people time to turn to him. He's giving people time to turn to him. You think he and um, to come to, you think it pleases him so much to, to punish people, to get people away from him for all eternity. I don't think so. But sin must be punished if we don't want. To accept what Christ did for us, then we will pay, people will pay for their own sin. It's, it's a hurting thing. Just think of a, a child um, turning his back or her back on his parent or her parents. Yeah? Uh, cursing and, and, and despising them and, and, and those kinds of things. Just think about the heart of God, the heart of God, the heart of God. Hurting when he looks at his, his creatures and how we, we, we despise and we reject him and we yeah it, it's it's hurting. He will he will he will do that. Not that he wants to, but he will have to because sin must be judged. And if if the sin that was judged for us on in, in Christ at the cross of Calvary, then people will have to um, pay the penalty for themselves. I don't think it's something he wants to do, he desire, or delights. He delights to do that. I don't believe that. But he will have to, and he will not be God. <laughs> he will have to do that. Why do we need to know God? Well, if we need to know God because it is he who made us. We need to know the one who made us. You know, as a babe, and a babe, um, 
baby um, and the parents and as as the babe looks into the mother's face and looks into the father's face um you get to know you get to recognize the face of the father and the face of the mother and anybody else come around they would not know that person so you want to you get to know the person who made you we need to know we, because it is he who made us and not we ourselves we didn't just drop from any tree he made us in his image and in his likeness psalm 100 and verse 3 says you see who made us and not we ourselves we are his people and the sheep of his pasture you see who made us we need to know him we need to know the one who, who who's keeping us. It is in him we live and move and have our being. It's not in our own strength and ability. You know, some, one songwriter says, I cannot even walk except you hold my hand. It is in him we live and move. Acts 17, 28. It is in him we live and move and have our being. John 15, 5 says, we can do nothing. Jesus said, Without me, you can do nothing. <laughs> Without me, you can do nothing. We also need him so that we could have our sins. We need to know him to have our sins forgiven. We need to know him so that our sins could be forgiven, so that we could have eternal life. John 17 and 3 reads, this is eternal life. When Jesus was praying, that high priestly prayer, this is eternal life, that they may know you. He's saying that they may know you because you're praying to the Father. And he says, eternal, what eternal life is? <laughs> that they may know you, God, the Father. Yeah, Jesus praying that we wouldn't, we know him. We know the Father, we know God. The only true God. The only true God. Beside him, there's none else, you know. And Jesus Christ. So we need to know God the Father and God the Son and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. Whom you have sent. This is eternal life. That they might know. Jesus was praying that the people, that people would know God the Father. The only true God. And also know Jesus Christ, the one he sent. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believes in him should not perish. But have everlasting life or eternal life. This eternal life is in Jesus Christ. If you have the son, you have life. If you don't have the son in you, you don't have life. And we 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 can we can choose we can choose to avoid we are talking about avoiding eternal punishment i don't know i don't i don't know i don't think i want to be punished for all eternity <laughs> i don't want that i don't think so i'm not i'm, I'm not that i'm afraid of any such thing you know i'm not afraid of something to be afraid of but i made my choice i want to live with the lord i want to be with him forever Avoiding eternal punishment. Two things to do. Get to know God. Get to know the God of heaven. Get to know the maker of heaven and earth. Get to know the one who has you here. Get to know God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We need to know him. So that we could love and serve him. If we don't know him, we would not we would not love him, we will not serve him. So we need to know him in order to serve him, to have a personal relationship with him. To have a personal relationship with him. You know, Jesus said, um, no man could come unto the Father but by me. We go to the Father. He will show us the Father. He promised to show us the Father. <laughs> he told the disciples, you see me, you see the Father. You see me, you see the Father. Because he's the express image of the Father. 
Amen. We need to know him so we could tell others about him. If we don't know who God is, we cannot tell anybody about him. You know, the chorus again says, everybody ought to know who Jesus is. My God. Everybody ought to know who Jesus is. You ought to know who this God is. The one who has this world keeping it in, in, in balance. The, the world, the, the earth in balance. He upholds the world by the word of his power. If it's not God, this, 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 this globe would crash. It is he who has it in place. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We need to know this God. You need to know this God. All of us. And I, like I said, is not knowing him in my head. And oh yeah, I know there's a God. I know there's God, yeah. But knowing him personally, personal experience, having an encounter with God, a real encounter, yeah. Where you met with him and you, he, he changed your life. He made himself known because he knows you. He knows you. He knows me. But do you know him? He wants you to know him. Because if you continue without knowing him, what he said here in verse 8, he's coming. He's coming. The Bible says he'll be revealed from heaven. And this is, this, is, um, this, is not the, this is not the rapture time. This is not the coming in the air. This is, this is when he comes to earth and, and begins to judge, to separate the sheep from the goat. Yeah? He's coming to take vengeance on them that know not God. This is so crazy. <laughs> not to know the God of heaven and earth, the creator of this universe. He can be known. He can be known. He wants you to know him. Paul says, oh, that I may know. Although Paul had an encounter with him, yet he's crying out. And that is that knowing there is, uh, have more knowledge, more revelation knowledge about God. Because the more you know him, the more there is to be known about him. He's inexhaustible. <laughs> he's inexhaustible. You cannot exhaust him. The more you know, he keeps revealing and revealing, little by little, little by little, who he is. Get to know this God. Get to know, because there'll be dire consequences. Not knowing. He's coming in flaming fire, taking vengeance. The inflaming fire, not that his brightness, his glory. <laughs> when, he, when he comes, he's coming with his angels. And Jude says something similar to that. Let, let me just read Jude. Jude is just one chapter. And verse 14. Um, and Enoch also, the seventh from Adam, prophesied of these saying, Behold, the Lord comes with ten thousands of his saints to execute judgment upon all and to convince all that are ungodly among them of all their ungodly deeds which they have ungodly committed and all their hard speeches which ungodly sinners have spoken. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world but that the world through him might be saved. Join Reverend Cynthia Forbes for the message of hope. Jesus says to go into all the world and preach the gospel, the good news. The good news of salvation. Why would I choose to spend eternity in hell with the devil who is wreaking havoc in this world to those who have given their, their time and their life over to him? I don't want to spend my time, my eternity with him. No way. And you should not want to do the same because it is forever and ever unending. Tune in for words of encouragement and hope in a life of Christ. Message of hope right here on the Tobago Inspirational Network every Wednesday, 5.30 p.m.